of Knits and Pieces. Uh, my name is Noelle. I'm Kelly. And we're coming to you from Montreal. Montreal. We Montreal. Montreal. We are um, actually just at our last pass through of the marketplace from this year's uh, Knit City Montreal. We've had a fabulous time. We want to tell you about it and let's get started. Let's get started. Okay. So we came to Montreal on Thursday on the train. On the train. Long day. It was a long day. Lots of knitting. Lots of knitting. Lots of knitting. And, 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 a, little, got, and a little napping. And I didn't have any nap. <laughs> I knit. I knit. I, I was awake. Sock. I was awake all night the night before. So anyway, we got to Montreal in good time. The weather was gorgeous. Um, it was lovely when we arrived because, well, actually, even on the train, we met up with um, some friends and, you know, Julia and Lynn and Rebecca, we had an amazing time on the train with them and we got to the hotel in good time. And, you know, we went up to the, um, we, we kind of like, um, uh, what'd you say? <laughs> we got the club pass for the hotel so yes. that, so that we'd be able to have some meals here and not have to worry about going out or getting places. So we went up to the club lounge and we had a wonderful time. There was tons of knitters there mm -hmm. and it was the Knitter's Lounge, for it sure. Was. It was definitely sure. the Knitter's Lounge. And it has been all weekend. weekend. Yep. Yeah. And um, first people we, we met up there were um, Queen Sandy. Queen Sandy. And her daughter Cher. Mm -hmm. And Irene. Mm -hmm. And Dawn. And Dawn. Yeah, so we met up with um, Sandy, who makes our bags. And Sandy is so, so kind and generous. And she made us, all of the group of us that kind of came together, she made us project bags well they're not project bags they're, they're shopping market, bags they're market, market bags. bags for using at knit city and we they came in very handy <laughs> it came in very handy we had to hang on to the bags uh because everybody wanted the bags yeah. uh they kept asking us where they were purchased and we had to say that they were made by a very dear friend they have our names on them yeah they're all monogrammed yep. uh, they have like four zippered pockets inside there's a heavy duty zipper and we can attest that it holds a lot of yarn we, we gave it a good workout we this weekend we and uh, they are perfect. Um, yeah, so thank you, Sandy, yeah, Queen thank Sandy. You, Sandy. And yeah. Sandy also gifted us with another round of bags for the podcast to give away as gifts. And so I'll show you this bag. I, I feel kind of like the theme for Knit City, although it wasn't like the signature color or anything, but we saw an awful lot of neon. Neon colors. This yeah. weekend. Yep. And it just felt like. Um, it kind of felt like the 80s all over. Well, it. I know, but it kind of, but I think they just, they're but it's just fresh. happy. They're it's just fresh. happy. And happy colors. You know, like it's spring and it's, I don't know, it just gives you energy and inspiration. Absolutely. So, so this is one of the bags that Sandy made for the podcast. And this is, I mean, it's not exactly neon, but it's got lots of bright colors. So we're going to, um, we're going to go through this episode and we'll yep. let you know at the end what you can do to have a chance to win this yes. one for yourself. Yes. And you will love it. And you will love it. Amazing. You could do a little shopping on your own for That's sure. That's right. For sure. That's right. It also holds projects. You don't just have to shop with it. You no. can put a lot of knitting projects in there. And uh, well, it's just... actually nice if you do go somewhere because if you've got a purse that you carry too, the purse would actually fit in there along with your knitting. Yes, and it's nice so... with the zippered pockets, so your phone and your wallet yeah. is is kept safe. Yeah. So, all right, where should we start on the weekend? We, the first day, like the market wasn't open on okay. Friday, um, so we did a little shopping. We've we've. Uh, made some friends here last year that were super kind and generous and it's Jenny and Jill and they and, know who they are. Yes, and we did meet up that, with them on Thursday night as well. Yes, Thursday So that night was nice well. because it just it just even though we we like just met them we feel like it we've was known like them seeing old friends again and uh it just uh, and this year we could give hugs. Yeah, that's right. last year we had covid and that's we were right. like well we didn't have covid. And I got that after the show last yeah. year. But last but, year you had to be masked. Yeah. And, so. and so this year it was, it was like so wonderful to be free to give hugs to people and get hugs and hugs are awesome and Yeah, so we've been chatting with them so it was like 
on Instagram. So it was nice to, um, yeah. nice to connect in person again. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so uh, they had driven in mm -hmm. and we were lucky enough to be invited on a little yarn crawl the next day. And uh, we had a great time. So we started out, we went to uh, Espastry Co. Espas Co first. Yep. So we can talk about what we did there. We, okay. The store was full. The store was, was. very busy. Um, uh, we were warmly welcomed into the shop. And uh, some of us, not me, not you, were much better organized. They had lists. Yeah, uh, they had me. projects that they wanted. No, not us. We're just sort of in there willy-nilly walking around. And you're all going to be surprised when you hear this. Noelle didn't buy anything in the shop. I did not. She did not. I did not. She I was, was saving, saving myself. herself. I was. Saving herself. So um, I only bought one thing in the shop, but I'm super excited about it. And this is a color. It's a Julie Aslan, and it's the Lizu fingering. And I bought two skeins of this to do a summer top. So, so very pretty. Uh, the colorway is Olia. And it's kind of that... Well, I want to call it like a puce green, but I don't like the word puce because I don't. Is it like a chartreuse? It's uh, maybe like an. It's not quite an ochre. It's definitely more of a chartreuse, but it's a color I've been thinking about for a while. I see a lot of people pairing this like with a navy or with a white, and I've been drawn to the color, and I wasn't certain I could wear the color. So, uh, five other people that were traveling with <laughs> us that day assured me that it would look okay with with my dark hair and my skin tone. Uh, so I'm going to give this a whirl. So this was what I bought at Espestry Co. And I just I couldn't love it more. It's so, so soft. And it's uh, it's a single too. So I really like the drape that a single gets right. in your knitting really yep. nicely. And, then, and what's the composition of it? Oh, sorry. It's not, it's not just merino, I don't think. It is it's not. It's 90% merino, but it does have 10% silk. silk in there as yep. well. So that's that sort of lens that really, um, there's, there's a, a really pretty sheen to it. I hope yep. the camera's picking it up. So we're in the hotel room. It's a bit of a, well, it's a little sunny out there now, but uh, so hopefully we've got some decent light for this episode, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that I got, because I had bought in some of this last year, and it's a yarn I've worked with before. I originally bought it in New York, the elemental yes. effects. Yes. yes. And I've made, I made the hedgerow uh, fingerless gloves and they are still today, probably my favorite fingerless gloves. So this is the Shetland fingering yarn by elemental effects. And I picked up two colors, a teal and a purple. And I just thought that this, I love this yarn. It's so incredibly toothy, so it's fantastic for color work. And I have, um, as you know, I have a little bit of holst. So I thought I know that I have some light gray cones, mm -hmm. and I thought this might be really pretty to do um, some type of a sweater that requires a pop of color in the yoke, and I could use the light gray. I thought that mm -hmm. would look really very, yep. very Julia yep. inspired. Yes, very Those Julia would be inspired. Colors, that's for sure. So. So that's what we got, or that's what I got at Espas Rico. And from there, we went to a little shop that I've heard about for a lot of years, Rick Racks. Mm -hmm. And it's not a yarn store, it's um, trimmings. It's a, trimmings. Yes. Yes, trimmings. I was going to say a notions store, but it's really not even notions, it's more trimmings. Yeah. So she has a lot of buttons in there. I mean, okay, that's the wrong word. That's, there's. There's more buttons than you can imagine exist. Mm -hmm. I guess that's would be a better word. And the shop, she has it. Um, I will insert uh, a little bit of video here because, um, and I won't say this every time that we insert video, yeah. but I did take a little bit of footage there and she has a really clever way of displaying some of her ribbons. She uses old style film reels and she's got them up on the walls and yeah. it was a uh, very well organized little shop uh, with lots of things, like you could be in there for days. Uh, <music> some buttons 
I didn't buy any buttons. And I mean, I won't take all of these out. So they're just like some unique little buttons that I don't have any specific intention for. I have kind of some ideas in the back of my head of some yarn that I have at home that I may need buttons for. But um, anyway, so we had fun shopping for that. She also had some ribbon mm -hmm. and Noel. And I'm all about the steaks and the ribbons. All about the steaks. So. So we chose a few. You can well, I think there's off. only two different. I think there's only two different patterns because I think your three are the same as, like yes. the actual pattern is just in different colors. Oh yes, this is a different pattern. I yes. didn't get any of this yeah. one. Yeah. So this one basically, I'll hold it up there, but you can see there's kind of like a little embroidered heart down the middle, and then there's two little decorations on each side of it. So this one actually came in quite a few different colors. So. I know that if I get a meter and a half, it's enough to do the front steaks on a cardigan. So I just bought a meter and a half of each one of them. And the nice thing about the ribbons too is they don't necessarily have to totally match your cardigan because you're not gonna see it other than when you you know kind of take it off or you flip open your, your collar for a minute. So you can use it for just that added little punch or, or you can totally coordinate it if you want. But buying it for me was a little easier than buying buttons because it, I don't feel like I have to match it exactly like mm -hmm, I do the buttons. Mm -hmm. So that was the, that's kind of the black with the little pink hearts. And Kelly's got a couple of that one too. I have, it's kind of like a taupe with a, with a little pink trim. And then this one is um, a darker taupe and it's got just the pink on it. Right. This one's just a full out beige. So it's just a nice neutral. And then there's another another beige one where the hearts are multicolored. There's we a, got all a of these and, and not, we on didn't get side. one duplicate color. No. So those were the three, did you, you know, those were the, the ones in that pattern. And then I have this Did one's have the same. One yeah, and this oh, one. That one. Okay. It's like a teal blue. And then this was another pattern that they had. I don't really know what you would call it, but it's kind of got. It's more like a braided. Yeah, a like a braided, a braided. Braided, and this one is like with a, um, like a burgundy in the background. And then the other one I got was more like would go with really nice with denim colors, and it's got the dark blue in the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just got enough for. You know a cardigan each or if i was doing the girls cardigans i'd probably get two cardigans out of one mm -hmm. so yes so we're and it's like you them. said nobody really sees the ribbons no nope. unless you're hanging out with us because because then you'd want to see them and you, then we want to see the them. ribbons so we're like oh look. show me your ribbon yeah i want to see the ribbon yeah so it's uh it was a lot of fun yeah and uh we went out for a very nice lunch mm -hmm. after that uh at an italian restaurant we had a great salad yeah. We all ordered salad, I think. We did. Yeah. And it was very good. It was very good. The the um, oh, the parking here in the streets are something to get used to. We I'm super happy that Jenny volunteered to drive. Yeah, we want to drive. say a big thank you to Jenny because I would not have been able to handle the drive. She was fearless. <laughs> was That's what I have to say. She just motored through and she had a big SUV as well. And uh, she just, yeah. Yep. And find parking and whatnot, but and typical uh, big city. And as the minute the weather gets nice, there's construction everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. So. But the streets were so lovely in some of the neighborhoods because these shops aren't. Uh, they're not exactly situated in like um, in a very metropolitan no. area. Like they're all in these residential little neighborhoods. There's beautiful brownstones with the mm -hmm. gorgeous stair rails leading up to the like second levels and uh, lots of nice gardens around. It's, okay, so then it's. Day Skip one. Ahead, Saturday morning and the market opened at nine o'clock and it was much more crowded than it was last year. And I was there at quarter to nine. Noelle didn't get there. Until uh, nine. That's because I went down to the room and she didn't come down to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting thinking, okay, okay, is Kelly coming? Is she not coming? So then I decided, okay, I'll just text her and tell her I'm going down to the market and I'll meet yeah, her down there. Kelly was, was in there. line. I, so. I didn't get that. I, I don't know. I missed that part of the memo. But anyway, <laughs> we, we made it in. We were there. We were in the first wave of people that we went were. through the we gates. Were. And it was... It was quite crowded. There was a couple of booths that were very crowded. Very crowded, but it was and, very exciting. Yes.
Actually, the very first booth that I went to was the Miss Nietzsche. Yes. I should show that. I almost forgot about that. I have that down here. So this is a, um, I can't even really call them, well, project bags. I guess she does make project bags. But this was, this was, I had looked at a bag similar to this last year and I didn't get it. And by the time I went back, 
It was long gone. gone. She was like sold out. So Last I year, thought, I think she sold out in about 45 minutes. Yeah. So this is a long time waiting for you. Yes. You did want this yes. for a long time. So, so I went and she had this one and it was pink plaid and it's a uh, Harris tweed and it's just gorgeous. And I'm most likely not going to use this for a project bag. I'm going to use it for a purse. However, even as a purse, I'm pretty sure a pair of socks fit oh, nicely yeah, in it along sure, with your sure. purse items. Yeah. And it does have a drawstring. It's got um, like pockets inside where you could slip your phone in. And just, I mean, the inside fabric is as gorgeous as yes, the outside absolutely fabric. Absolutely beautiful. Very well made bag. And I just, I just love it. So, so that was so the first stop. Was it was a beeline. She knew where it was. And we just, yep. like, and there's the, right there. that's her. Um, tag right there and this is actually just called a project bag done in all Harris tweed mm -hmm. so beautiful, beautiful bag yep so that was the first stop so then we went to the far side of the um yeah kind of away from kind of away from the main door so that we figured if we started over there it started would be a little less and worked busy. our way back and it actually was yeah it, it was, was it was, it was, was a little less good. busy over at that part so so we did like a quick real zip through and then we decided to do some buying yep so I think the one of the first stops that we made was at, um, hopefully we're pronouncing it this way, right. yep. Lolo B. And she had a quaint little setup in there. Mm -hmm. And she had, um, so this is one of the items that we are going to insert. We did some little um, interviews with people. So she, I will let her tell you the story yeah. of the Fonte yarn. From France, <laughs> and uh, I'm living uh, in Montreal since five years. Okay, and it's absolutely beautiful yard. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And why, why did you decide to carry that? Uh, because the my father's family came from this con this region, this region, 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 in France. region. region. Yes. yeah, in yeah. France, and uh, it's in this region when well, when I was a child, I spent a lot of time uh, was with my grandparents and uh, with my family during the summer. Uh, it's the place where I learn to knit okay, with my grandma. Perfect. That's perfect. And uh, it's a really, it's a region so... Close to your heart. Oh yeah, yes. yes. It's yes. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, when I'm an eater and uh, I decide to, to um, venir, uh, bring, bring the uh, the yarn from my first region right. uh, here in my new country, and uh, I'm and so you're proud. Your and yeah, 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 yeah. So yarn with beautiful. the yarn, yeah, I, I share my country, I share my passion. Yeah. So I'm proud of it. <laughs> and you're giving, you're sharing it with all of us, and we love it. Oh, thank you, thank so, you. And I know Kelly and I both, we both got some yarn yesterday. Can't wait. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just gonna show them a couple yeah, of course. the guys. So this one yeah. is just an amazing yarn. Yeah, this yeah. one is called Mustache. Mustache. And it is a blend of mohair, silk, silk, and merino. And, merino. and it fin, feels like fin merino. It feels like butter. Like yeah. It does yeah. not feel like butter. It's <laughs> yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you've also carried one that's Yeah, called. I have baby merino. Uh, it's uh, the only base um, was super wash. The, uh, yeah, the three other is Nancy Kovac. Okay. Um, the third is Mongolia. Yeah, Mongolia. Yeah, it's a it's a yeah it's a blend of uh, merino and yak, so and this, it's it does it's just oh, absolutely my gosh. amazing. If you look, if you look this sweater, the the drape is so it is. Mm, it's a hug. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. I love. It's my favorite sweater. And the third, the fourth, is the 880. The name is for the the date, date, the date, the date of opening the filature. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a whole meal. Okay. And so now, do you go back to France and um? Hey, when I go back to France, uh, I bring the the yarn, and uh, I tell my parents. Bring me oh, some okay. fun so tea. Your, your parents are still living in France. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. All okay. my family. I'm here with uh, my husband and my kids, and that's it. <laughs> and my yarn now. <laughs> well, this is a nice way to bring a little piece of France. Yeah, 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 yeah. The knit is magic for that. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's okay. a. You know that you know that knitters love to share. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. 
thank you very much. Thank you. And I can't wait to next see up your yarn, your top you're wearing. It's beautiful. So and, uh, what is this one done? Hmm? What's the top that you're wearing? What's it done? It's uh, an Abel crop top. Yes, but your yarn. The yarn. What did you yep. get it in? Ah, it's the mustache. Oh, okay, okay. Excuse well, it's me, hey, my That's English is... <laughs> It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a mustache and it's a, a fingering, but the, the, the color rock is, yes, it's amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I'm proud of it. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you again. Oh, yes. With pleasure. Yeah. We fell in love with this and this was an easy purchase, an easy first purchase. So. Um, well, you bought two two bases. I did. Okay, so I'll, I'll, show, you... I'll show the other one first then. Yeah. So this is this is Fonte Yarns. It's from France, mm -hmm. and this is the Mongolia Three, and this is a blend of. Let me just find it here. It is eighty five percent wool and fifteen percent baby yak, and it just it feels like amazing. It is. A sport weight yarn. It's um, 150 meters and 50 grams. So I got four skeins of these, and I want to do I want to do a vest with it. But that color is just mm -hmm. amazing, and you can see the depth of the the yak through it. Mm -hmm. And I think that'll make a like a really nice vest for like um, next fall. Yes. So and she did have a sample she vest made up of in every this. Base. Yeah, yes. and it was it just looked amazing. So and it's soft and squishy and non superwash and <laughs> just fell in love. So that was the first purchase there. And then she has a fingering weight base called Moustache. And we really like this one. This has an interesting blend as well. It's 30% uh, mohair, 20% silk and 50% fine merino. And it there's like there's this beautiful halo. Mm -hmm. It has a gorgeous sheen. It is as soft as you can imagine. It has a beautiful drape when it's knit with because yep. she had samples as well. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and we just, Julia was in there with us. We yeah, were all, Julia spotted this color first. Uh, it didn't suit a project that Julia was looking for. So then this color got handed to me and then I couldn't decide if I wanted this or this color because I really fell in love with this beautiful, beautiful green, but I couldn't decide. And then and this, this ultimately I decided on this the blue. and Noelle said, well, then I'll take the blue. I want yep. the blue. Yep. <laughs> So <laughs> the blue got handed around, but anyway, it's it it is amazing yarn, and if you have an opportunity to get your hands on some, we highly yeah. recommend. And it. And it is also um, a fifty gram ball, so but this is there's two hundred and twenty five meters in it, and she did have a sample made up on this, and the drape in this yarn was incredible, incredible, just beautiful. So we're really excited. I don't have a project in mind, but uh, I feel it's probably going to be something lace work, like mm -hmm. something similar to the uh, Coutar tee that yeah. I made, something with some beautiful lace, and I I can just picture this like with some linen skirts, um, or it would look even great with navy. I mean, this is a beautiful I, yeah, color. And that will just go with yeah. like almost anything. Yeah. It's beautiful. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Where do we go after that? Uh, did well, we go to Bar Trico because I knew I wanted to go there. Yes. So we had seen this yarn uh, at, at Espa Trico, Trico, but yeah. they didn't have the colors. Well, no, they didn't have enough colors. No. And she let us know that Bar Trico would be at the uh, yarn shop or at the at, at the market, and we knew that they would have everything there. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I is, wanted to go see it, and they did. The colors they had and the amount of it they had there was amazing. And it's a brand new base. <laughs> Amazing. Hi everybody. Hi. So now we are with oh, Artfil, Artfil and Baratrico. Okay. So okay. we're the owners of Artfil and Baratrico. Welcome. Yeah, and tell us a little bit about your story and how you got started with yarn. And yes, dyeing. absolutely. Okay. So um, we started Baratrico, I would say, over five years ago. Me and Patricia, my partner. And um, then during COVID, we were mentored by Artfil. And during COVID, we acquired Artfil. So now it's all our. You know, same company. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Welcome. And we have like um, a lot of different bases. Our fingering base and our DK base are the same for Artfil and Baratrico. And then we have a complement in Baratrico, which is more of this, um, the mohairs. We have a champagne base, which is a sack, um, a silk we are in nylon. Love the base. Yeah, in love. which is really cool because all you need is about two skeins to do a, a anything sweater. you want exactly <laughs> correct exactly so this so is the really this fun. is the champagne base and it feels unbelievable it's 70% silk 20% mohair 10% exactly. nylon exactly that that 20% nylon is not is enough 
to make it beautiful, but yet not itchy yes. directly on the yes. skin, and right? And the silk just has the gorgeous sheen to it. Correct. And um, yeah, two stains and that pretty much will do. Yep. Yeah, so. we have a, a ridiculous short sleeve, size large with six millimeter uh, needles. I think with a stain and a half. Yeah, because because I'm doing what Renee and I want. Yeah, and it's just absolutely the yarn is amazing. Yeah. With. So do you have a sh an actual shop or do you just set up that? So basically, we don't have any shop open to the public. We typically sell to yarn shops. So okay. we're real dyers. Okay. okay. Um, do you have online? We do have okay. online on both websites. You can okay. buy directly online. Okay. But we like to encourage our um, brick and mortar stores so you can go ahead and go every yarn shop usually carries our yarn, whether it's Arco or Bob. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, we've enjoyed looking at all your colors on your thank yarn. Thank you, thank we both, you. We both got this yarn to make. Thank you so much. Make sweaters and are just in love with how it feels. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank also, you. we have um, Artfield, we just launched our new Surrey base. Okay. So the Dream okay. Surrey okay. base. Um, it's the Surrey Merino um, silk um, base, which is like a heavy fingering. Okay. So it's not like the typical lace. Um, it's a little bit heavier. Correct. More substance. Correct. Okay. For people who don't like mohair or can handle mohair, right. this is an awesome. Uh, I had that in my hands yesterday. Uh -huh. I might have to go back. Yeah, yeah. it's gorgeous. Okay. So gorgeous. Well, so thank you for taking the time you so to much. talk to us. And Love you guys. Thank the you. The shop is super busy. Thank you so, so much. Enjoy. Okay. And for our English-speaking friends, the name of their shop, Bar do Trico, means yarn bar. Yeah. And they have this cute little play on word or on, on uh, photos on their label to make it look like martini. a little a martini glass with a yarn ball in there with some knitting needles. This yarn is called Champagne 2.0 and it it's it, curly, it, it's fun, it looks like you've knit something with it and then changed your mind and pulled it out. And it has an, a really interesting composition. It's uh, 70. There is, yeah, 70% silk, 20% mohair, and 10% nylon. So you get the halo from the, the mohair. You get the sheen from the beautiful silk in it. It just feels as light as a feather. Mm -hmm. And we both bought a couple of colors in it. So I think Kelly's are for, are for one project and mine are for two separate projects. Yes. So I did have a plan for this. Once I saw the colors, I got two amazing colors. This, this one just yelled at me. And this is called Amazoni. And this one is called uh, Hibiscus Rose. And I love how these two play together. So I was originally thinking of something like a rocket tee that I would mm -hmm. do like a stripe and a stripe each. and a stripe mm -hmm. of each. And then, and I'm gonna call you out on this, Maris. <laughs> I know you're watching, shame on you, because I got it into the hall and we were talking to yep. her and she's like, oh, she was a friend of hers or somebody that she knew was doing uh, Caitlin Hunter's Wike in this. And, and then I got thinking, I haven't done that sweater yet. It's been in my queue for a long time. Well, that would have involved a third skein. So what did Kelly do? Kelly had to go back and buy the third skein. So um, this one is gonna be a Schweik. And see okay. the two colors you bought. Okay, so this is one of the colors that I bought. This color is called Mad Monday. And it's, um, it's, it's variegated, but it's kind of subtle, but it's got, mauves, peaches, pinks, pale green, pale gold. Just, I don't know, it just looks like a nice summery color. So I got that color and then my second color is already wound up and Kelly helped me wind it up. <laughs> and this color is called- I was the Swift. This is called Lavender Smoke and I've already cast it on and I'm knitting a ranunculus with it. And it just is, it's just as light as a feather. It feels like a dream. It's beautiful to knit with. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to wearing this over dresses or just over a little tank top with um, maybe some white pants or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it just honestly just, it, I just, I can't even explain it. It just feels like amazing to knit with. There's subtle variation there that you can see. And since I did the last ranunculus, my beaded one, which were the first ones that I kind of did really cropped. I've kind of fallen in love with that. And I think this would look perfect over like a black yeah, dress. Absolutely. And so I know that one skein will do it. And this will, this will be my train knitting on the way home. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you'll probably get to see this. Uh, so you might get it. You might, you might have, you might have already cafe. seen it, depending on what goes up. You might yes. have already seen it finished. <laughs> yes, you might have already seen it finished. Exactly. But anyway, just just absolutely gorgeous yarn. It's just, I can't, I can't even describe the feeling. 
Like it's softer than a silk mohair for sure. It is for sure. Yeah. It definitely is. So. And, it's, and it looks like you said, it's light as a feather. You but it's feel like, nothing. it's funny because when you knit it up, you don't really see the, curl. the waviness in the yarn. No, you don't. So I, I, and this one is, there's a plan for another little summer tea with that one because that booth was very smart. And if they had samples or if someone working in their booth was wearing a sample, they actually had little cards made up that said the sample name, oh, yes. the yarn that was used, and the color of the yarn that was used. So that way you could go and you could look it up on Ravelry and you could find the actual pattern instead of having to remember it with everything that you've seen that day. So the other one that we are uh, looking to make is, and this, these are the little cards that yep. they had, super great idea. Yep. The Honey Bee Tea by This Bird Knits. Yes. And uh, yeah. So yeah, so that's what this is going to become. Yes. So. And they're absolutely amazing. They, they, were, they were lovely. They were just lovely. They were girls I'd love to. to knit with. Yeah. Like they were super sweet. And, and the, their booth was bright and cheerful and just. The, they had minis in there. They called them shooters. Like yeah. everything was, you know, cocktail themed. It was, it was a lot of fun. Really? And how could I not buy a yarn called champagne? Come on. Exactly. <laughs> Unless it was called Prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway. Absolutely. Was was fun. Okay, so um, we were out. It was the way it was set up? There were a few vendors that were kind of out in the hall outside of the main ballrooms, which was beautiful because it's actually an atrium. So it's yes. all, all glass yep. windows out there. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yep. And I was just kind of I don't even know what we were doing, but I was just kind of walking by, and I just happened to just glance in one, and I had been looking for this for a long time, and this is the um, Manchalope. So this is an unspun yarn. They had it in this color. They had pinks and they had a whole bunch of natural colors and a blue. And you passed on the pink? I did because I brought it out and I was holding it and people said, oh, the green, get the green. And I'm like, I really want the pink, but okay, <laughs> buy the green. And it was kind of, it was kind of a more baby pink than what I, that I, than what I normally gravitate to. So I thought, okay, like maybe the green. And I think the green will, I think the green will be nice. But anyways, I really wanted to try this. So I ended up getting three plates of that. So this vendor was called Wolverton, Wolverton Estates. Estates. And they had other gorgeous yarns in there too. And the girl was lovely. And she showed me some samples knit up with this. And this yarn comes, I don't want to pull it too much apart, but it actually is um, double stranded. Mm -hmm. So you can either knit with the two strands together, there I pulled a piece of it off, but you can actually knit with the two strands together or you can separate it, although I'm thinking it would take a lot of work to go through and unroll and separate all of this. Yes. But, or you can separate it and hold it single. I know lots of people, it's very similar to working with the Plutolope or the Nutidin, mm -hmm. and a lot of people hold it with a mohair. Mm -hmm. So I haven't decided, I actually have, um, I actually have an 100% alpaca lace weight yarn that I got out in Prince Edward Island back years ago and it's got all greens and pale pinks in oh, it. Oh nice. And that I might would look hold really yeah, I might hold that with it for something. Very so, pretty. Anyway, happy with that. So mm -hmm. I really want to try that. Okay. I think we're, we're after that. I think our next stop was uh Sonder Okay. Sonder Yarns. Okay. So uh, this was probably the one and only thing that I had on my to do list for Knit City was Sonder Yarns. So okay. last year uh, when I was here we well we both bought yarn. Yeah and uh, we bought the Sunday morning four ply, four ply. Mm -hmm. and I bought the colorway and I'll just show you my sweater because I, I just finished it recently so you'll probably remember but this uh, colorway is called Free Spirit and it's this is the Heartwarmer Tea by Justina Lorkowska so I did wear this we, mm -hmm. I wore this to knit night actually here uh, but I had purchased three skeins last year and I finished this this in exactly two skeins and then I needed the third skein for about three or four rows in the rib. So I have almost, almost a full skein. So I brought, I wanted to pair this with something and uh, the choice that I got, so I picked up two more skeins mm -hmm. of this because I want to do a color work sweater and probably not a crop. This one is a crop so I want something that I can actually wear with jeans according to Kelly's rule of crop sweaters. Uh, so I want something that's a little bit longer. So I got two skeins of the navy uh, that I want to pair with it. And I'll just show you that. And I know navy's not the most exciting no, but color choice, the pink and but it's it looks go with a lot of things and... amazing together. Mm -hmm. And I know that it will go with a lot of yep. things and yeah. And then the pink, the pink and the yoke is really going to pop then. Absolutely. So yes. So I, uh, I got that and I did debate a few other color options as well, but 
Navy is what I had on my mind going in and Navy is what I left the booth with. They were definitely one of the busier booths. They were for sure. Like from start to finish of yeah. the festival. Um, and, but her yarn is beautiful. Yeah. Her colors are gorgeous. Her color sense is just incredible. And I mean, well, she even dresses herself nicely. They have all of the beautiful samples showing all of their yarn. And, you know, samples really sell, they do. too. They, they do. They really it gives you a sell. chance to, to see what the yarn knits up like, to feel the drape of it. You know, because sometimes in a skein, it's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. Like, you're just feeling it on the outside. But that's that could be totally different than what a yarn feels like once it's knit up and blocked. Mm -hmm. It can feel totally different. Well, so. um, I'm not sure what your feelings were. But for me, this particular base, the Sunday morning four-ply, this for a fingering weight yarn is so much more plush than I would have imagined yep. it to be. Like it's a very bouncy, uh, it's lightweight, it's yep. lofty. It's, and we it's, should say it's a blend of, of BFL Masham. Yes. So it's, I think it's 75% BFL and 25% Masham. Mm -hmm. And they do have that, like um, this one, and I believe this one is dyed on the darker base where the mm -hmm. Masham is like a, a darker sheep, like a brown sheep, so that you get your, your fiber that you're starting off with is a darker fiber. Mm -hmm. And now they've recently come out with um, what they call their Ecru, I believe it's Ecru base. And then they're starting off with an actual base of yarn. It's the same fiber composition, but the base of the yarn is more white. So mm -hmm. the color that you get on it is gonna turn out lighter. Cause mm -hmm. I do have some of that in like a green color that's really pretty too, but the yarn composition is the same. Yes. And when you talk about that, because my purchase at Sonder, um, I bought the Muse. In Free Spirit. In Free Spirit. And the free, and this is a... But it's interesting how different... That's right. Because this, this yarn composition is 90% um, merino, 10% linen. So when you look at the same color dyed on this base on as opposed base. to on the Masham, the BFL Masham the color comes out entirely different. Yeah, you can really see the dark fibers coming through in um in the with the mass of yeah. in there, right? Yeah. But, and I can say I didn't I didn't even think about any other colors, so I picked this one. <laughs> <laughs> so it said it was just like I thought that and I thought, yeah. And anything else I looked at was no this is the pink. The pink is what I want. So pink is what you want. I am in love with that color. So I can't wait to knit with that. And the samples done up in it were gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So it's absolutely beautiful. Okay. Also at the market that day, we uh, got a chance finally to meet somebody that we've bought a lot of yarn mm -hmm. from. Yep. And uh, we had never had a chance to, she's from out west, so uh, we had never had a chance to meet her before, but uh, she dyes all of the yarn at Rose Hill Yarns. Mm -hmm. And if you've watched our podcast for a while, you know you're probably familiar with it as well. We absolutely love her sock yarn um, and we especially like her half skein sets. Yes. We gravitate to those. Uh, that way we have no leftovers. Yep. We get a perfect pair Your of socks. socks. That's right. And she has also such a beautiful color sense. She does. Uh, she uh, talked a bit. Um, we'll pop that video in. Something about her inspiration, how how she dies, and she even spills the beans on her favorite color right yep. now. Right. Okay, so we are now talking to Robin, who is from Rose Hill Yarns. And Robin, we love your yarn. We've knit your socks, we've, we've gifted them to people, I've made the socks for people, and it feels amazing. Thank you so, so much. Where do you come up with the ideas for all your colors? Uh, a lot of it is Instagram. So um, when I first started, um, I realized that I had to learn how to take pictures of right. the yarn and display it, especially online. Uh, super important during COVID times, obviously. Right. Um, so then I started following a lot of food bloggers, uh, and they would display because I figured displaying a bowl of spaghetti if they can make it look nice, yarn would be yeah, the same true. thing. That's true. That's true. So I started following a lot of food bloggers, and then from there I started following a lot of interior designers. Um, because I would also get a lot of questions about, um, I need a colorway that would, I want a cheek and mittens to, to match my winter jacket. So I had to start following these designers to know what colors they were putting out for that year. So I followed them and then people wanted to make pillows. So they're like, you know, I want a, a contrasting to, you know, my brand new couch and everything like that. So I follow a lot of designers. And then also I follow the designers of the knitting and crocheting world because, you know, they, they kind of pick the patterns, but then they'll want like, 18 minis with such and 
sex patterns and whatnot. They want them either contrasting or blending or fading. So yeah. And what we really like that you do too is a lot of times you put together the matching mini with the sock and that makes it a lot easier for anybody that's not confident in their color choices. And then we also like the fact that you do your little um, because realistically, a lot of times when you need a pair of socks, you don't need a full 100 gram. Although, if you get them, I think you Right, right. So, so, I would knit socks for my kids, and I just found that I would have lots of half skeins here and there. So, I was like, well, if I'm only using half skeins, then I should start selling half skeins. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, I like having sock leftovers to put in things, but it, it gets to a point where you're getting so many socks that you've got a lot of leftovers. Lots and it's really sometimes. nice when you know that you get something like this and you've got enough to look at box and then you want something. Right, so, right, exactly. But it's, I mean, and I, and I see too that a lot of times you've got a couple of different colors that go with your particular, so you can probably put together a thing, right? Right, right. So a lot of um, things that I'm doing now are fades. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, that do uh, start with a, a, a lighter color and then going down to the darker color. So this is our blooming fade. Um, and then too, it makes it easier if people, um, you know, I get asked all the time, I love this skin, but what goes with it? Yeah, exactly. So, I, you know, I can kind of have everything right beside each other and then they can kind of yeah. decide for themselves. Yeah, even you've got your yarn kind of lined up yeah. sort of in colorways that go with each other. Yeah, yeah, it makes it a little bit easier for the shoppers. Um, just because, as you know, it can be so overwhelming at, at markets. It, it's yeah. Do you have a favorite color, Robin, that you dye? I I mean, I'm all over the place sometimes. Or is everyone that you newly dye your new favorite? No, not quite. <laughs> so I have two favorites right now. Um, they are the um, oh, that's the vanilla bean, um, just because it's got the champagne colors in mm -hmm. it, uh, with little uh, speckles of cinnamon, mm -hmm. and then uh, it's not with it, but it's how it came up with oh, vanilla wow. bean okay. is I had dyed rock melt and the brown had ran and when it runs it runs this lovely um, pink so then I decided you know I'm gonna take the the green off of this and just do like where it runs to oh, the champagne cool. colors so those those are my well, two I right actually, now put that together in a sweater, like even in like let's say a rocket tee and then alternate the, the stripes and I think that would be important. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And they're from two different fades, so I yes. made sure that my fades also fade together okay. as well. So if you have a fade that's an 18 color fade, which I have seen, Right. I got you covered. Okay, perfect. So. And you can follow Robin on Instagram because I know that you post about um, shop releases that you have when you have a new color coming out, yes. which is really appreciated. Yes, that's, yes I do. And we can pre-shop. <laughs> and I, I try to see, stay seasonal too, so I try to stay with what's coming out for spring, right. fall, right. Christmas, Halloween, things like that as well. Um, and I also post the inspiration photos. So yes. if you're wondering why I paired teal with orange. You can see the inspiration. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for talking to us. And thank you for asking us. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what we bought there was some prizes uh, that we'll be dumping into the prize bin for some of our, yep, our, our sock, sock, you know, our yep. sock giveaways. Yep. And we thought we would just quickly show you those. Uh, which ones did you get? Um, well, this one doesn't have a colorway name on it, but it's beautiful. It's really subtle. Really, It's like a pale, pale pink with like light dove gray um, little speckles in it. And then it's just got a coordinating mini that's got a lot of the grays and just... I don't know it's just subtle and it looks a lot like her chickadee base that yeah she the had. one that yes yeah, yeah yes. it's very pretty so that was the first one that i got and i picked up a uh, tiger lily which i really really That's like pretty. this pretty look at the very vibrant summery orange. and very summery it's got some gorgeous green to go with it and, and then got... and then i got this one which is called sea foam sea glass and it does look like like sea foam and like some of the sea glass that you find and it's paired with um a light taupe for your heels and toes or whoever you want to use them in the, the um, sock. And it does have, you can see going through it, it does have the darker, like what you would see your sea glass and it's got some little hints of the taupe in it and they just look beautiful together. 
in keeping with the summer theme and the beach, Beach Hut, which is a really fun colorway uh, with some beautiful teal in there and a nice beige base. It looks like driftwood yeah. and yep. like a Caribbean and ocean, ocean yeah. all at the same it time. Does. It so does it's look really like that. beautiful. Yeah. And maybe that's what her inspiration was. Who knows? That could be. That could be. When she does, when she puts a lot of her Instagram posts up, she puts posts of her new colors coming out, but she usually always puts the post, um, the inspiration photos too, where she got the ideas of putting those colors together. Mm -hmm. So so we will add those to our, our sock yarn prizes. And we will also, I want to mention that there will be under the video, there will be a link to show notes and we will link all the vendors that we've mentioned in this podcast. Mm -hmm. So... So okay. then we stopped in to see our friends at... Jessica and Allison. Jessica and Allison. And, and her mom. Christine. And Christine and her mom. Yes. yes. Yep. And I think their dad's with them this time too. I'm pretty sure with, I, I didn't see. I didn't see him in the booth, but I think he was with them either yes. at breakfast or dinner. Yeah. So. And uh, they are the team behind Full Moon Fibers and... Jay again, Henry Designs. And Jay Henry yes. Co-Designs, yes. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> We're here... Uh, what did you think of Montreal? What do you think oh, of the venue? It's been great. Yeah, it's yeah. been so fun. It's like a beautiful hotel, beautiful like room that we're in. Um, yeah, it's been really well run. And like, yeah, it's just been great. And taking care of us, like I'm just even so thankful for the water stations. Like that's been wonderful. Yeah, yeah it's been wonderful. So what can you tell us? What have you got going on here right now? Um, what's new? What's changed? Um, what have you got for new bases? Well, we're working on having um, a more of a DK Bouclay lineup, so that's our one of our newer bases, and we have lots of new project bags from Jessica, she has a new style, so like, this is the larger version. I love these new styles she's got going on, that like little side pocket, it's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's a full pocket on the front, um, so she has two sizes in those. Oh, we did some mega, like mega packs of mini skeins that we're pretty happy with. So yeah, we're just trying to like make sure there's a little bit of everything. For sweaters, socks, yeah, everything. Good. Uh, Jessica. Jessica. <laughs> Jessica, put the phone down. Come on over. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> How have you handled the language barrier? Any problems? No, no, pretty good, no. Actually. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think, yeah, when everybody's talking yarn, it all just, like, makes sense. Yeah. Universal yeah. language. <laughs> yeah. What was your favorite part of the show? Oh, well, okay, so I like that we're in the hotel. Like, we get to stay in the hotel, and then we just get to come down to the show floor. is really nice. And then, yeah, it's, like, a relief, kind of. And then, yeah, and it's just so nice seeing everybody. And there's such a wide variety of crafts, like, represented within the textile, like, fiber industry. Like, there's weaving and felting and spinning. So, yeah. <laughs> I absolutely love your color sense. You guys have like, this is a vibrant array of colors. Everything's a rainbow in here. We have so much fun working with the yarn and we love making socks. Well, mostly socks, but I've got some of your mini packs too. Um, maybe can you grab some of your little mini packs that you've got? Some of your new ones? Yeah. Let's show those off. Yeah, sure. I know, I bought the new one. I think that you call it your um, like moonlight and moon swim. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> night swim. Night, night swim. Night, night sorry, bright. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, night. Okay, okay. We made I'm it confusing on ourselves. <laughs> so we've done the late night after set, which is super fun. It's like a reverse speckle. So all of the sock will be read mostly in black, and then you get little pops of color. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Should I get the sock too? Get the sock. Yeah. <laughs> so I bought that one, and I, I just think it looks amazing. Thanks. It's just so nice just to have that little pop come through. Yeah, yeah. 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 So this is all gorgeous. What the sock looks like. I know, I'll even sew in all the ends just to do those, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> and then we uh, made a big mini skein set recently, and this is for the bluegrass shawl by okay. Woolen Pine Designs. So, yeah, you've got everything you need here and lots of bright colors to uh, do that fun Beautiful. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. Safe travels home. Thank and you, you too. And I guess we'll see you on your, oh, we should say, I know that you ship everywhere, so they have a great online presence as well. We keep forgetting to mention that about some of the people we've talked to, but I know that shipping is very easy for you, and uh, you also have a podcast that you do every other Monday night, yeah. um, uh, where it's live and you get to hang out and, and knit with the girls. So, thanks so much. And we'll make sure, we'll make sure that you, we get your website down in the show notes so that everybody knows where to reach you. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. you're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
<laughs> so you've heard us talk about them a lot. Uh, we love them. Mm -hmm. They're a family that works well together and they have some, it was a very colorful booth. It was, it was very beautiful. colorful booth. Beautiful. So. And uh, they have some new things that they've brought out. Mm -hmm. And so we jumped on the, uh, the new thing train and they have a, a line that is, uh, it's, it's dark. It's it dark is. with pops of color. I think they call it night, night. something. Cause night the, something the, or other. Okay, well, I might as well show the mini set. I'll try to hold this up carefully. But the mini set is called Late Night Crafter. So the yarn base is basically black. And then it's got pops of, in my case, it's a lot of these neon colors. So there's like the pink and the orange and then white. And then the yellow and the turquoise and the purple. And so um, Jessica had, had showed us a sweater she was doing it. And she had all of these up in the yoke of the sweater. And it mm -hmm. looked amazing. Because you just get, you know, a little pop of the color every once in a while. So I haven't decided yet if I'm going to use those to put them in a sweater or maybe sweaters for the girls or maybe socks because it was a pair of socks made up and they looked amazing. Mm -hmm. And then they also do the colors that are in that, they do in full skeins. So I got a full skein of the Night Swim and in the Night Swim, there's even more. There's um, the blues, but you, if you look in closer, there's also the purples. So you're just gonna get those little pops of color every once in a while. What does she call the technique? resist dying oh I missed that part yeah I think she calls it resist dying right? I'm not exactly sure how it works and Jessica or Allison if you're watching if that's wrong let me know let us know <laughs> so. and I got nightfall on the solar sock blend and so this one is it's like a deep 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 per burgundy with these little pops of like a neon pink yep and I was definitely thinking socks for these because I I just really like the way this looked and I was actually thinking muscle burrow, but it would make a really nice oh, muscle burrow. That, that would be nice too. So I even thought that for the for the package that just <laughs> like knitting one after the other would make a really cool muscle burrow too. <laughs> yeah. So and then the other one that I got and I've been watching them with this on the because they have a podcast on Monday nights, every other Monday night. Mm -hmm where they do a live show and you can knit along with them and they talk about some of their new products in the shop. But this one is called Favorite Granny Square Blanket. And it's just, it's 20 colors wow. mashed into <laughs> there. And I just think about how fun this would be as a pair of socks, like yeah. really super yeah. colorful socks. And then I would probably, there are there is black in here as well. So I'm thinking I would probably do like black heels and toes, yep. just to, you know, to kind of tame the madness yep. down. But I really, really like it. And uh, like I said, I've had my eye on it for a while. So I was happy there was still some in the booth by the time we got yeah. there. Okay. And then, and then you picked up something at Jezebel. I did. Um, we met her last year. Yep. And, yep. So uh, after the knit night, I think. After the knit night. Yeah. And she has, oh, I don't want to take the packaging off. Sorry. I'm going to leave it in here. But she makes these, um, she makes leather goods, firstly. Uh, she had beautiful leather bags, uh, leather needle holders, little wallets, the uh, journal covers. And the leather that she uses is straight from Italy. It's it's incredibly soft. It feels like something that you've already used for a long time. Like it's time. worn in. It's really like, yeah. beautifully worn or patinaed so she had these and um i'm not sure if you'd call them buttons or if you'd call them like a little label but they're uh, and some of them are upside down so you won't get the exact effect but they're just little um heart cutouts on leather and my intention there's different colors there's like a cream color a black and there's some brown ones that i bought my intention is i was just thinking like to kind of stitch them onto a hat yeah, yeah. or um even like a mitten or, or something like even that down at the side of a cardigan, at the side of a cardigan or, or, yep, or a sweater yep but it's just sort of that uh it's another way to say made with love yeah exactly yeah absolutely yeah. so i picked up uh, some of those from her and i'm really happy about that okay and then the last place that i went to that day was ancient arts and I'd, I'd been looking on their website because I'm always looking for fibers that are different, right? Mm -hmm. So I found this one and I had looked at this on their site and this is called their Lasco Fine. And this is a blend of 25% Manx Lockton, not sure if that's pronounced right, and 75% Punta Arenas wool. So I'm gonna have to look up Manx Lockton sheep I've seen. So I, I know what they look like. I'm gonna have to look up the Punta Arenas, but this is so, amazingly squishy and bouncy plump, plump. so it, it does list it as a fingering but there's 350 meters and I honestly think that'll knit more like a sport mm -hmm. like for sure and this color is uh, does it have a color name it's called cypress mm -hmm. so that color is called mm -hmm. cypress it's absolutely a gorgeous 
It's not olive, but it's not, it's just, I don't know. I guess it's Cypress, that's what it is, it's Cypress. So I got enough, that Just I just got two skeins of it and I, I'm gonna do probably a short sleeve or a three quarter length sleeve mm -hmm. um, shirt with it. And I think it'll show off a textured pattern really well. So I was very happy with that. And it's not super washed, but that there's that does not feel toothy. And I mean, it feels toothy, but it doesn't feel rough. No, or it's rustic. not rustic, it's not no, rustic at no, all. It's nice no. and soft, so. And it does say like wash in cool water, so I'm very happy with that, Yeah. so. And then we went to Knit Night. We did go to Knit Night. And lucky ducky Noel, <laughs> first ticket, again. first ticket drawn. She wins a prize. And yeah, uh, tell them what my number was. <laughs> nine, nine one one. Nine like, one one. Like we didn't have to call nine one one in New Zealand. No, we had to nine call one one one. one. Okay. Right here we'd have to call nine one. Nine one one. Yes. So anyway, so I won a prize, and the prize is from Bartry Go, and that was we had shopped at that store today, and this is an absolutely gorgeous. Yes. Gorgeous prize. So there's enough there to do a sweater. And this is in their um, bourbon DK, another another drink name, spirit name. <laughs> and this is 244 meters uh, in 100 grams. And I think that would make a lovely striped. I think so too. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So the, the blue, I don't know if they've got color. Yeah, oh gun, yeah, blue, mar blue margarita. Oh, so it's two different colors of blue. It? Sorry, it's a fade then. Okay, so this one is gunpowder. Oh, okay. This one is... This one is blue margarita. Okay. And these two then are Paloma. And these two are Paloma. Yeah, it's really, but those really are, beautiful. But those are close, close enough, that, enough I, that I could if like... you're striping. Yeah, them. yeah. They're so pretty. Yeah, so because pretty. The, the peachy corally one has little pops of the blue in it. And then of course it's got my favorite, my favorite neon pink in there. Mm -hmm. And It's like they knew they were gonna give it to Noelle. So it? anyway. Anyway, yeah, that was exciting. It's even a little more special now too because we've met them, we've chatted with them, I know. and now we know a little bit yeah, more about them. They and, are and, and they're lovely, and, and how they die, yeah. and and what they do, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, very nice. Anyway, yeah, it was that was that was fun. Yes, <laughs> and so. I didn't get to wear my sweater. My my intention was to finish my glitter sweater to wear it to knit night. I did not get to. Noelle finished all three of her sweaters, <laughs> and she has been shining like the star she sparkling. is all weekend, sparkling so. and glittering. We did, see, we did see other glitter, and yeah, um, a lot of comments on the glitter. Yes, lots so of good comments. comments. Good comments, and you know, like if you can't wear glitter to a yarn festival, wear January, right? Right. But so. I did get my sweater finished uh, yesterday, and then I did wear it to the marketplace today. I did a little hotel room blocking with a spray bottle and laid it out on a towel last night. So it's not. I mean, when I get it home, I'll have to I give it a, a much block. better blocking. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm 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 happy it with good. it. Yeah. I really like the uh, the. Oh, I got a lint. It's just kind of like the right amount of sparkle it's for like right, subtle sparkle. Just the right amount of sparkle <laughs> when you need a little pick me. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we did get lots of compliments. On I know, it, because on I know we've sweaters. shown some of the, the sparkle and the glitter on camera and it, it does not show the way it shows no, in it real really life. Doesn't. It really doesn't. It really the doesn't. camera just doesn't pick it up. So yeah, yeah. so it's kind of nice to wear it out in the world. Absolutely. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. So day one was definitely a success. <laughs> <laughs> now we're moving to day two. So yeah, and we... Sandy's bags carry a lot of yarn, but we did have we, to empty. We did, have to, we did <laughs> yeah. have to empty and go back. Yeah, it was so much fun. Okay. All right, so. day two. What did we do on day well, we two? We should start with Ginger Snap, I think. Yes. Okay. 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 So we did visit our friends, Kim and Colin, at Ginger Snap, and they had um, quite a large booth, mm -hmm. nicely displayed. So uh, I did pick up a beautiful skein of yarn there. So this is called Blooming. And it is their lush fingering two ply. So it's a superwash merino nylon 7525. And there was a pattern designed by Nancy Wheeler. I think it was called Bloom and Lovely, but I'm not positive on that. Anyway, it was knit up in this yarn and it was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So socks, socks, socks yes. And I mean, that's definitely my pale pink colors with the kind of just little bit of mauvey, purpley speckles on it. So that's most likely going to be socks. And, and I got a skein um, also on the Lush Fingering. And this one is called Awaken. And I feel like it's kind of the counterpart. So it's, yes. it's beautiful. But it seems like it's, well, it's all from the same collection. Yes. This was part of the one collection. But yep. it's like an amazing counterpart. Mine's on a yep. gray base. Yours is on yep. that pink base. Pink base yep. And they had other colors in this collection that you could create a fade. I think yes. she had like six or seven colors. Yep. 
um, within this within this group yeah. that would create a beautiful fade. That's right, because so there were pretty. solids in some of the colors of the speckles and yes. that would work beautifully with it. Yes, absolutely. And I also got, oh, we got these Oh two. yeah, I did. Did you get Where these? Did yes, I did. She has these fun little needle stoppers. Um, you got, are, well, yours are gnomes, right? Gnomes. Sorry so my, for the crinkling. Mine are little gnomes, and I just, oh, I can't resist them. They're just so cute. <laughs> and I got Wonder Woman. <laughs> so, so fun. Yep, we picked up those. And, and then, then they were so kind. I know, they were very generous and kind to us. And they gave us some yarn and a bag for some prizes. And I think these were a couple of the other colors. And I think this was their springtime line. So this is crisp. Yep. And this is thrive. And you can kind of see if we hold, if you hold them all, all of them up, up together, how yep, they kind beautiful of all go the collection together. is working together. Yeah. So these are so, gonna be coming up as gifts. And then she also had, along beautiful. with the, the yarn, she had these absolutely beautiful bags. That fabric is gorgeous. Everything again. And it's all color coordinated. Sort of it's just all color coordinated. Yeah. She's very good at that. And this is a series that we, we launched it a couple of weekends ago in Jasper at the tree. Okay, okay. So, yeah. Okay, and then, and then, does Kim then do most of the sewing for the bags? Yes, Kim and Kim's mother. Oh, okay, okay. Kim's mom does all the bags okay. that are like that. Okay, so this is a true family business. It is, yes. Okay, and you do a lot of travel. We do. Okay, yeah. and so your next show, where's your next show? Our next show, well, we're doing uh, pop up in at Little Red Mitten. Oh, are you? When yes. is that? Uh, Friday. Okay, so you kind of do, you kind of like when you're at a show, you'll try and incorporate some other stops along the way. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then Saturday we're at the Cozy Knit, or not, the Creative Knit, sorry. Okay, okay. Yes. Creative Knit. Okay. And then we're going to head back. Okay, perfect. So, so, yeah. so we might see you at the Little Red Mitten. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and then, what do we do? I can't remember. I can't remember. But anyway, we'll make yeah. sure that your website's on there, and I'm sure that all that information is on your website, which sure. shows are going to be. And yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, we have a newsletter that comes out monthly. Okay. Too, so okay. If people want to sign up for that. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk to for us. For sure. Yeah. And we'll see soon. Yeah. For sure. Okay. <laughs> She also had, and we saw this today because it wasn't there yesterday, but we saw it today. Oh, the Wednesday collection. They have a Wednesday yes. collection. So if you are at all a fan of Wednesday the Wednesday Adams. Adams and you're looking for some nitty things to go along with it, they have an entire uh, group of dyes that tie into that. And she bags. has made some bags yeah. to go with that. It's very like that night shady colors. Yep. Um, they even have like the creepy hand yep. down there. For thing. 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 <laughs> yes. It was really, really, really well done. Yeah. And uh, it was nice to have a little visit with Kim and Colin yeah. too. They're doing some pop-ups and I'm not certain of the dates, but I know I'm they've got one coming up at Little Red Mitten. Yep. And a creative read. knitter? Does that sound right to you? Okay, I, don't quote us. They have some pop-ups. If you don't follow them yet on Instagram, you can uh, you can do that. And I know Kim's very good at uh, putting out schedules and right. letting you know when the pop-ups are. Where they're going to be, yep. So, yeah. So, Okay. Um, Jemmy Yarns dyes wonderful yarns. She's got this beautiful collection of tweeds and she does tweed her tweeds. is her passion, she yes. says. Yes. Yes. And she does different weights of tweed and she generously donated to the podcast this skein of, uh, it's 85% superwash merino and 15% Donegal nap. And then it's paired up with this little mini in a taupe color that beautifully matches the mm -hmm. naps and the yarn. It would make, you'd probably have enough there to make two pairs of yarn. Absolutely. Two pairs of yarn, two pairs of socks. <laughs> yes. And so, so she has some other events that she's going to be going to, mm -hmm. I think as well. I think, yeah, I think she said twist. Twist, which yes. Which I would love to go to someday. Yes. Well, that's on the agenda. It's on the agenda. On so. the agenda. So we, uh, Noelle did a little interview with yeah. Gemma and... Gemma was nervous, and you can't even tell in no, this interview. She no, did she wonderful. So right. we'll pop this in here so that you can meet Gemma as well. Because yeah, she's wearing a beautiful sweater that's done in her yard. Beautiful as well, sweater. So. Okay. So my English is not perfect. So that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I'll take her the clients while you two chat. Is that okay? Okay, so we're at Knit City Montreal, and we're talking with Julie. And Julie, um, this is your booth. Yes. And what's your yarn brand name? It's Jenna Yarns, so it's a hand-dyed yarn. 
like others, and uh, it's more like tweed yarn. So uh, tweed, uh, the tweeds all behind us here, and it's yes. gorgeous. Yes, so. we have tweed tree weight. Okay, tweed. Yes. Oh, tree weight. weights and tweed. Yes. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so is, is it all soft yarn the tweed, or is it um, some without nylon? In it? Uh, it's. It's similar to nylon, it's okay. Donegal Neff, okay. so it's similar, so the strength for the sock is here. Okay. We have the fingering right. for the, the typical sock yarn, we have the Dika one okay. and the Western one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And how did you how did you become a yarn dyer? Like what do you oh. think about yarn dyeing? Uh, nothing. It's my mother who bought a store a uh, yarn store. Okay. So I'm like, okay, I'm placing all the yarn and then I starting the thing. That's how it started and with my mother on the festival twist like three to four years ago. We took a course for hand dye okay. together with uh, Julia Slay. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so it started here. Okay. Well, it's your sweater that you're wearing. Is that done in your yarn? Yes. Okay. We I'm, have. Sorry. That's okay. I was going to say it's it's by Pokey, right? By? Is it the lace and fade boxy? Um. Yes, it is. <laughs> We have this Stella who wasn't figuring one, and we have this Suri alpaca for the lace. So it's soft. beautiful. It's really soft. Beautiful. So, <laughs> and um, do you go to a lot of festivals? It's my second year. Oh, just second? Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. And do you do any other festivals other than the City Montreal? Yes, we go to Twist, okay. uh, Festival Twist. And this year we're gonna go on the La Petite Lame. Okay, is that a, is, where is that one? Ah, I don't know. Is it in Quebec? Uh, yes, it's, okay. yes. Okay, it's and Quebec. Twist I've heard of before. Where is Twist? Is it in um, Saint Henri of Mai? Okay. So it's uh, like in the um, in the, in the country. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to talk with your yarn Thank is you. beautiful, your color sense is amazing. You've got lots of samples that people yes. can check out for um, getting touching. some inspiration and yes. touching and seeing how the yarn knits mm -hmm. up. Yeah. So, um, I'll see you next year. We'll yes. back to the City of Montreal next year. Oh, sure. Oh, okay. sure. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. We'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> this one I think okay so we were talking about this I think before we went there no I don't think we were yeah, or we were. were we yes, yes we were. okay so we were, we, were, we were talking about it at breakfast at breakfast with Jenny and Jill and Megan and Megan yes, yes and we should right. mention that too we didn't know Megan before we came but Megan came and she kind of knew Irene and Jenny, Jill, and, Jill. Jenny and Jill and Megan has a podcast too called Wool and Cookies I was and gonna so, say milk and cookies, but no, it's not milk and milk and cookies. Cookies. And we, So I had I had watched her a few times, so I did sort of recognize her, but we had not met her before, and she was just absolutely a sweetheart. We had a great time. Yeah, and great. so so they were talking about this sweater that they had seen in a booth. Do we remember, remember the name of the booth? Fibrani. Oh, was it called Fibrani? Okay, yes. so it was, the booth was called Fibrani, and they had seen it the day before, and they had all bought yarn to do this, and they said, "You have to feel this sweater. You have to feel this sweater. You're just gonna fall in love." So, so we went to the booth and we felt the sweater. So we did and we did. And then, yeah, we felt the sweater, we bought the yarn. So the pattern that we're going to make is... Uh, we're going to put it, we'll put it, Kelly will put it we'll on put the it down below because we looked it up and now we can't remember. No, now we can't remember. But so. it's, a, it's a, a variation of a striped sweater. Yep. And this yarn... I can't even tell you how no, good this it's yarn beautiful. feels. It's it's light, it's hazy, it's it's absolutely gorgeous. So it's a three color sweater. Yes. And um, it's, we'll put in a photo. Yes. Okay. It's a and beautiful sweater. Yeah. So we so five of us are making this sweater, and we're going to wear it to 
Ryan back. Ryan back. So. Yes, we are. And so, okay, you want to talk about your colors? Okay, so my colors are Gloria. No surprise there. <laughs> and how do you pronounce that? Oh, sorry. Yiv. Evie. 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 And natural. natural. And so. um, I have the same coral. I have the same cream. But I have also caramel. Which, and I just love this. Yep. And we should have said, too, the name of the yarn. It is Fabrani yarn, but the base is called Nuage. Yes. And um, did you even say what it was? Uh, it's... it's Baby alpaca, 38%. It is 37% Pima cotton, 25% merino. You can't feel any cotton in this, by the way. No. It, it, I wonder if the cotton's like the core. Maybe. Maybe that's that white thread in there. But yeah. it's it's such a beautiful sweater. It looks it, it does. It's, it's it a looks very amazing. elegant it looking amazing. sweater. Um, I think it's going to be warm. So It'll be nice and cozy for, uh, yes, it'll be yeah. nice and cozy. Yeah. Maybe too cozy. So, oh well, <laughs> we'll be prepared. We're gonna wear it we'll anyway. We don't care one way or the other. Yes, absolutely. Okay, and then and then we visited Debbie. Yes. At the Loving Path, and Debbie is actually relatively local to us too. She's in London, which is about an hour from us, and actually she lives not that far from where my daughter lives. And hi, so now we're here with Debbie from the Loving Path, and Debbie, you're almost our neighbor. Yeah, if you live in real life, you live close to us, but we're here at Montreal, yes. and you've got a beautiful booth set up. Thank here. you. So, now how did you get into dyeing yarn? Oh, this is a story. So, my son has always been homeschooled. He's almost 17 now, but when he was about six, he asked for a hand pair, I mean, a new pair of handmade mittens. Okay. So, I okay. said, okay, well, as a homeschool project, why don't we dye the yarn? Okay. So, I went and bought a bunch of Kool-Aid for him. And he dyed it all in a little pot pot. Okay. Actually, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And it was the most beautiful oh. little yarn. Oh my ever. goodness. It was amazing. And so I knitted him the mittens. Okay. And he wore them till they felted down to nothing. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then yeah, and then I just kind of really got to distance that process. Right. And used up the Kool-Aid, and then that year for this is my husband got me professional dyes. Wow. And then I was dying, 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 and the rubber-made bins were growing. Yep. And finally, he was like, "We're gonna do all this," so I started to sell. That is, that's an amazing story. Yeah, that's it an is. amazing story. And that then the name, the Loving Path. So the Loving Path came from I blogged when he was little. Okay. As part of the homeschooling community, I had a little blog, okay. and that was called the Loving Path, which was how I kind of wanted to live my life as a person in the world and as a and kind of how I took my approach into dying as well. Just, yeah, just kind of, it, it had become who I was, so it felt right to see it. Yeah. And so as you go along, like we know that that when you're dying yarn, you basically have to kind of keep up with everything that's going on, family life, and yeah. friends. So how do you keep getting inspired? Well, I just kind of do what I love. Right, okay. so I, I often joke with people, you know, if everyone stopped buying my yarn, I need to be able to wear my samples and knit with what I have left. Right. So I kind of just kind of stay through my own aesthetic and what I love to wear and the colors that I love, and that's kind of how I decide what I dye and what I make of samples. Yeah. Well, honestly, so, all of your colors are beautiful, and they all go so well together. Yeah. And like this particular base, I love. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Sure. So I'm um, so this is a ninety percent. Merino 10% linen, um, and it just it washes really well. It wears really well. It's really soft. Um, people think because it's a wool, it's going to be hot. But the linen really, I don't know, it's only 10%, but it really alleviates some of that heat that builds up in, right. in wool, yes. and it's very cool wearing. Mm -hmm. um, and I just love it. It just knits up. And you have some gorgeous things. And there's some beautiful things over here. So it's kind of like they're kind of tonal. So it's like like. You get that all of the over look at the yarn that just like the depth to it. Yeah, I don't just speckle typically on this base. Right. It's kind of solid, which is really what okay. I prefer in general. Anyway. Right, right. And then you kind of come up with a classic piece that you can wear yes. for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can wear it with anything over a dress, over a skirt, with yeah. jeans. It really works well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we are enjoying your booth. Are you enjoying Montreal? It's lovely. I love Montreal as a city and I love Yacht Knit City. It's just great to see everybody and to connect again. Yeah. So I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. We found some beautiful yarn in her booth. We did. So what are you looking for? Just that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is the Merlin fingering and it is 90% merino, 10% linen, and this is in the colorway Piper. 
So I picked up those two skeins. I love that name. Piper? Piper. But what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to actually pair it and put it with this, this pink that I got from Sonder Yarns because I think they go beautifully together. But with two of these and two of these, I think I have enough for just like a little tea in this one. And then I'll use the leftover from this and put it in for a pop of color in the pink one. And Maris was wearing a sweater that had the yes. had similar colors. Yes, and, and I can't sort of remember the, the name of it either, but she was going to send me the link to it. Yes. So, But interestingly enough, once we got back up to the room and Noelle was unpacking today's haul, she pulled out and she's like, look at this. This is the yarn that I bought at Espace Tricot, the uh, Julie Aslan, Lizu, and look at this. Look at this. And I mean, I wasn't even, I wasn't even, I didn't even. You weren't even near no. me when we bought this. No. So, so we bought the same color of yarn, not even, not even realizing. Yes. It was the and same of color course, of this yarn. is the same color that I bought last year. Yep. So it just works out. We don't plan these things. No. This is just, once again, we don't so. plan these things. All right. And I bought at uh, The Loving Path. This was a color that I really fell in love with. And it's the same base um, that she has in the Piper. And this one, the color is spring. Oh, Spruce Lee. Is it? I didn't even look at the color name. That's really fun. Spruce Lee. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous teal. teal. Yeah. Um, but it's that like perfect summertime teal too. And the the drape of this, she had several garments Made knit it. up. Yeah. I think that's what sold me is feeling the garments. Yeah. Feeling what Because they... typically we all complain about knitting with linen. We love the finished product yeah. uh, because the drape of a linen is absolutely amazing. But it's like, I'm going to be honest, it doesn't feel great to no, knit with. And, and the more linen content, the rougher things get. But uh, this feels like beautifully soft. And I know that it's going to make a gorgeous okay. garment. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then my very last thought, because, because I do spin sometimes when I'm not knitting, I had to pick <laughs> up a little bit of fleece. And this was, this was like, this was my last purchase. So this is from the Fiber Imp. This is a, um... Let's see, what does it say here? It was merino it's on the other side. It's a sari silk bat. So it's 85% merino and 15% sari silk. So the sari silk, I think you can just see those little different pops of different colors going through it. This is 55 grams. So when I spin this up, it will be enough for some type of color work in the yoke of a sweater. And I think it'll look really good. Even just in even a cream colored sweater. And then you just have a pop mm -hmm. of this and up at the top. I think it'll look really good. And it feels like amazing. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And actually, you know what it really reminds me of? It reminds me of the uh, the, the skeins that we bought from Full Moon yes. Fibers. The yep. very dark base with yep. just these little just pops little of color. Pops. So yep. yeah, you'll be uh, yep. spinning up your very own night something or That's other. Right. Yes. That's right. That's so. right. So that brings us to the end of our market days mm -hmm. and uh, a good time had by all. Uh, bags well filled and Tonight, uh, we're going to be trying to pack all of this right. up into bags. We have to catch a train in the morning. Yep. We've got some knitting ahead of us for yep. the ride home. And uh, once again, second year running, we've had a fantastic time at yep. Knit City Montreal. Huge thank you to Amanda and Fiona for putting on an amazing event. Yep. An amazing yep. event. And it's just been a few days of friendship. Yep. Fellowship. Yep. Knitting. Yeah, it's been wonderful. We met so many wonderful people, people that have watched the podcast and come and talk to us. That just makes our day and fills our heart. Absolutely. It, it was just, the, the days just went by like that. Like, I can't believe, I can't believe we're here. We've been here for three nights already. I can't believe it. I know. So, I know. The day, uh, they've been tiring days, they though. We're tiring. not going to lie. They, they've been tiring naps. days. I've been staying up late, getting up early. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. I'm ready for a nap, believe me. Yes, yes. But so, it has been amazing to meet all the people. I mean, yeah, the the, the yarn is amazing yeah. and we've had a great time, but more than anything, it's just been, it's been an exciting group of days yeah. of getting to uh, visit. Yep. Yeah. So, so don't forget, we've got our Sandy bag that we're giving away um, for this episode because we know all of you can not ne necessarily make it to Knit City Montreal. So what we would really like you to have a chance to feel like you were there. So all we would like you to do is leave a comment down below and just somewhere in the comment include Knit City. Knit City Montreal. Knit City Montreal. Okay, yes. somewhere in the comment include Knit City Montreal. And we will we will draw that on our our live knit chat on what did we say? June the June the sixth. June the we 6th. think we think that's we think the it's right June now. the sixth. Whatever whatever that week, whatever that June sixth week is, it'll be on that date. Yes. And um yeah, so you know And remember that we would never uh we would never contact you underneath this video or like through that type of message. All of our prizes we announce on our podcast and ask you 
to contact us and we would never ask you for anything more email. than your name and your address. Yes. Yeah. So, and then we can get that out to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there anything uh, else? No. So, you know, um, I hope you enjoy this little recap and, you know, we certainly had fun and, you know, I hope you stick around and watch us sometimes and see what we make with these things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if you uh, were lucky enough to attend and you uh, found us in the crowd and you said hello, thank, thank you again you so, so much. much. We yeah. appreciate each and every hello and hug that we got. Yeah. And uh, we've just had we've just had an amazing time. Yeah. So thank you. Okay. So take care, everybody. Thanks for watching and happy knitting. Happy knitting. We'll see you in the Knit Chat Cafe. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm.